and a warm welcome to Procurement Shorts, where you get to keep pace with everything making news in procurement and supply chain. Let's take a look at the headlines today. The semiconductor shortage may just go from bad to worse if the Biden administration has its way. A U.S. Department of Commerce letter accessed last week reveals that the government could expand the list of curbs on U.S. shipments to China and impose restrictions on the export of chip-making equipment to the country. The letter addressed to three American manufacturers earlier this year, that's KLA Corp, Lamb Research, and Applied Materials, has said that new regulations on these exports were in the offing. The department said that in the interim, these companies are forbidden from selling chip-making tech to Chinese factories without its approval. The plan is being seen as retaliation to China's stronghold over semiconductors, which has upset the global tech supply chain. The Biden administration believes America could, in turn, create a chokehold over chip-making equipment, which will cripple Chinese manufacturing. The directive comes at a time when semiconductor manufacturing is in the midst of one of its worst crises. A Future Horizon study predicts that the industry is poised for its biggest downturn since the millennium began with a degrowth of 25% to be valued at about $450 billion on the back of a historic supply crunch. Earlier, the consulting firm accurately predicted a growth of 4% for the semiconductor market in 2022. The good news is that medium-term supply concerns may be offset by a mammoth greenfield project in India. Taiwanese electronics firm Foxconn has joined hands with a local mining major, Vedanta, to invest $19.3 billion in India's first ever semiconductor plant. While there is no word on capacity, production is expected to begin in the next two years. The American truckload market continues to display softness and oversupply. A recent study reports that shipments are 5.5% lower than last year, while truckload rejections are below 6%, an indication of looseness or capacity abundance. Multiple reports claim that carriers are focusing on asset utilization and are willing to accept truckloads even on non-viable routes. Los Angeles saw the lowest rejections in the last two months, that's 2.32%, while trucks in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania saw the most, rejecting nearly 7.39% of shipments. That's still quite low given that Harrisburg rejected 20% of its shipments proposals in March. The pronounced looseness in American trucking has caused buyers to ask for significant discounts, and tracking data reveals that transporters are complying. Capacity abundance aside, the willingness to cut spot rates is being put down to diesel rates, seeing a decline since July. Sonar data indicates that the period between mid-July and mid-August saw spot rates drop by 5.8% across the USA. Compare this to mid-2021, and the contrast is as striking as it can get. Uncertainty over truck availability, staggered international lockdowns, and a driver shortage saw trucking rates increase significantly last year. However, a great purge in trucking is seeing some much-needed spot rate correction, with potential for rates to plummet lower in the lead-up to the holiday season. A fertilizer shortage in Europe was expected ever since the EU imposed sanctions on Russia. But the energy crisis over the drying up of Russian gas supplies in the Nord 2 pipeline has impaired Europe's ability to manufacture its own fertilizer too. Poland's largest chemical company, Grupa Azoti, announced it was cutting down its ammonia output on the back of record gas prices, while fertilizer major Anwil announced it was suspending its ammonia fertilizer output. The CRU group claims this wipes away 38% of European fertilizer manufacturing. Further, the consulting firm said unreported stoppages could be much higher, and it isn't getting better anytime soon. European gas prices are 500% higher than a year ago, and 10 times of those in the U.S. Fertilizer producers like Yara International, Borealis, and Fertiglobe have now warned of more shortfalls. While the EU Commission may have mitigated the situation by lifting tariffs on ammonia, procurement demands may be far too heavy. This is partly because rationing of gas will become commonplace in the winter, especially if there is a full shutdown of Russian supply. This leaves multiple countries looking to the U.S. for fertilizer procurement, even as American firms like Mosaic boost production to meet European requirements. The company hinted, though, that its fertilizer will come at a higher price than before. It said in a statement, 
While prices for natural gas and other raw materials we use in fertilizer production have risen, so have fertilizer prices. How much higher though? I guess we'll just have to wait for the next few months to find out. On that note, we're out of time for the show, but remember to check out barolive.ai to stay updated on all that's happening in this space. Ciao!